All righty. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the Michigan State University Science Festival. Um, I am Alyssa Space, and I will be your presenter today, and I will be doing the Chemistry and Cosmetics Lizzie Lip Balm Experiment. So, before we get started, I just want to give you all a brief overview of safety because it's super important to make sure that um, you are safe whenever you're in the lab. You're going to always want to wear goggles to protect your eyes from any splashback or anything that could possibly get into your eyes. You're going to want to wear gloves to protect your hands from transferring any type of bacteria or oils from your hands to your raw materials. And then you're going to want to either wear an apron or a lab coat like myself so that you can protect your clothing from any type of splash or your fabric actually getting into your final products. And then finally, heat safety. Um, it's super important to do this experiment if you're under 18 with an adult or some type of supervision because you will be working with heat to create this lip balm and to always be cognizant of where you're putting your hands when you're working with heat. So try not to touch the stove top, try not to put your hands in the hot water because you don't want to burn yourself or hurt yourself. And finally, um, typically when I am creating a, a product for my actual um, customers, I always wear a mask. I'm not going to wear one today because I want you all to be able to hear me and none of the things that I'm making today are actually going into inventory. So it'll be super important to make sure that you protect your eyes, your hands, your clothes, and your mouth and nose. So before we hop in, I want to give you just a brief understand or overview of the raw materials that we're going to be using today. And I hope you all can see them from over there. So we're going to be using six um, basic ingredients. The first one that we're going to be talking about is beeswax. Beeswax is actually going to be one of our emulsifiers. It has a higher melting point than the rest of our solids, but as an emulsifier, it actually works to give our lip balm its solid shape. So we're gonna be using beeswax. Very, and it's also antibacterial, which is really good to fight against like any type of bacteria on the lips or type of um, um, infections that you may get on your mouth, like sores that come during the winter or colder months. Next, we're going to be using candelion wax, which is also one of our emulsifiers. It's a brittle um, raw material that is actually super great for um, giving the lip balm its shape. And it, like I said, it has a higher melting point, so you can leave your lip balm in the car and you won't come back to oil. Next, we're going to be adding shea butter. Shea butter is one of my favorite ingredients because it has multiple uses. You can use it as lotion on your legs, your arms. You can use it as just pretty much anything on your body. It, it melts at um, body temperature, so it's really nice and it transfers really well. Next, we have castor oil. Castor oil is super viscous. That means it's really thick. So when you pour this one, you wanna make sure you take your time, but castor oil is also an amazing moisturizer. It allows one, um, you to, if you say you apply it to your hair, it helps with hair growth, it helps with um, eyebrows, and it also helps this is a little fun fact that I like to give my kids. Castor oil is a very great laxative. So if you're ever plugged up, it's castor oil. <laughs> it's a home remedy that my mother used to use. Next, we have jojoba oil. It's a super light um, moisturizing oil that's great for your um, skin. And it's actually the, the chem, I'm sorry, the chemistry makeup of jojoba oil is the most similar to the skin's um, chemistry. So it's super light, it's non-conogenic, which means it won't clog your pores. You can also use it as a hair growth serum and as well as just a regular daily moisturizer for your skin. And then finally, what I like to call the fountain of youth is our pure vitamin E oil. So we actually use vitamin E in our um, experiments at about 5% of our entire formula. Um, the reason why I call it the fountain of youth is because vitamin E has properties that fight against free radicals. And if you aren't familiar with free radicals, free radicals actually cause the skin to wrinkle. Um, and there's nothing wrong with wrinkles. Wrinkles show, you know, wisdom and time that you spend on the earth. But this baby slows down the aging process. So that's why we use all of these ingredients in our lip balm and our lipsticks because of the moisturizing properties that they have, as well as the properties they have to allow the actual lip balm to set. So we're going to get started. If you're at home and you may not have everything we have here in the lab at MySpace Laboratories, please use the um, supply list to give you an example of what you can use in replacement of what we have here in the lab. So we're gonna be using a balance today, a scale. We're gonna be using pipettes, 
to transfer our liquid. We're going to be using a stirring rod. This is glass. We're going to be using a spoon to transfer. We're going to be using boats to also weigh out our raw material on our balance. Of course, we're going to use our raw materials that was presented first. And then next, we're going to be using a double boil setup. So when you set up a double boil, you want to add just enough water to meet the bottom of your double boil so that the materials that goes inside will actually melt at the heat that touches the outside of the double boil. And also be careful when using your double boil not to overfill because if water gets into your product, it can contaminate. And we don't want that because this is going on our face. <laughs> so we're gonna get started. On, your, um, on our resource page, we actually give access to as far as like what numbers to use to make your own lip balm. I'm gonna be using a slightly different formula today just because I'm going to be making a larger lip balm than I regularly do. I normally make smaller ones that you can actually check out on our website. But we're gonna start with beeswax. I'm going to measure out three grams of beeswax. But before I do that, I'm gonna take my scale and I'm going to zero it out. And when I say zero, that means to tear it. It brings whatever is on the scale to zero grams. And then when I add the raw materials on there, I'm actually only measuring the raw materials. So as I'm transferring, I'm going to measure slowly so that we don't go over. Okay, so that is three grams. And now I'm gonna take my boat with my beeswax and transfer it over into my pot that is warm. And this is a fairly quick process because you don't want to overheat your raw materials because when you overheat your raw materials, as you're heating them, they're actually becoming denatured. When you denature a product, that essentially means you're adding heat and taking the nutrients out of it. So a great example to use would be spinach. You put spinach on the stove and you cook it for so long, it begins to welt and it loses its nutritional value. Still good for you, but not as good as if it was raw. <laughs> So next, we're gonna to go to our candle on wax. We're gonna weigh out five grams, and guess what I'm gonna do? I'm gonna tear my balance or scale, whichever one you're using at home. I'm gonna use my spoon to measure out five grams. Also, this, is going to, this can get messy, so. It's also important to realize that Every time you measure out, it may not be accurate. So I always give myself an error room of one gram. So if you have a, a, a balance that measures out in grams and not 0 .00 grams, make sure that you add slowly and then you always add your ingredients within a um, plus or minus um, one gram error. I'm gonna add our candeline wax. The beeswax is already melted down, so I'm gonna keep moving. Next, I'm going to add our lovely shea butter. I'm gonna add five grams of this. Oops, I almost forgot. I have to tear my balance. So we're back at zero. See, I'm, I've been doing this for years. I literally just put exactly five grams on here. So now that we've measured out five grams of shea butter, I'm gonna add it into our mixture. It's all warming up. I'm zeroing it off again. I'm tearing my balance. Now, since castor oil, as I mentioned before, is super viscous um, and thicker, I typically don't measure castor oil on the, uh, the actual balance. I measure directly into the pot. But since my pot is already hot, and I wanna show you all the correct way, I'm gonna measure the um, castor oil directly into our bolt here that's on the scale. So I zeroed it out. I'm going to add 22 grams now of castor oil. Remember, pour carefully. You don't want to go over. Now, if you measure directly into your melting or into your double boiler and you go over, I do want you to remember that if you're really good at algebra, you can always use the numbers that you've already recorded, that you've um, measured into your product or into your double boiler and do the algebra, the math to convert. Okay, so 
I measured out 30 grams of um, castor oil. You definitely are going to need more candelion wax and more beeswax, and you'll have to do those ratios to figure it out. Can't do it off the top of my head, but I've had to before. I'm adding in my 22 grams. And remember, be careful of the steam because it is hot and you don't want to burn yourself. If you have a spatula at home, you can use that to get the remainder of your castor oil out. But if not, that's okay. Now, I'm going to measure out four milliliters of jojoba oil. The pipettes that I use are hold about two milliliters each. However, to be on the safe side, I'm gonna use one of our boats and measure it into the jojoba oil into the actual boat. Accuracy is important. Now, if you aren't familiar with how to use a pipette, you're going to want to squeeze the top of your pipette, submerge it into your liquid, release the pipette bowl, and then the liquid will actually come into the actual tube of the pipette. And you're going to squeeze the uh, bulb at the top again to release it into your actual um, boat. So now I'm pouring this in. We're almost done. And remember to keep your hair back. You don't want hair in your, your finished product. So now that we have all of those ingredients, our last one is going to be vitamin E. Once again, I'm going to use a clean pipette because we don't want to cross contaminate. That's another really important thing when you're um, making uh, materials for your face is use um, clean pipettes, clean materials, because you don't want to either get a whole oil and vitamin E and then I make another product with vitamin E and it doesn't require whole oil and it, it can ruin your actual experience. So I'm going to once again press the ball, submerge it into the vitamin E, release to take in some of the product. And now I'm going to add about three to six drops of vitamin E into my pot. There's one, two, three, and for good luck, I'm going to put four. <laughs> right in the middle. There you go. So now we've added all of our raw material. Now I'm going to take my stirring rod. At home, you can use your spoon, or if you have a glass stirring rod and stir. Now, if you don't have a double boiler set up at home, you can always take all of the ingredients in the formula that we use today and just simply place it in the microwave for about 60 seconds. I try to stay away from the microwave just because this is more of a controlled setting. But now, everything has melted down and I'm gonna show you all what it looks like. I'm gonna walk around. This is what your butter should look like. It's typically what I call it, a butter. So once all of your raw materials are melted down and it looks like popcorn butter, you now have a homogeneous mixture of all of your raw materials. Homogeneous means that it, it all appears smooth and in one formal liquid. If you all have any questions to feel free to put them into the chat and I can take them as we're moving along to answer them or if you have any concerns about what is next. So now that that has set, if you have um, an actual tray at home or some type of jar to store your lip balm in, use that. I'm actually going to use one of our newer lip balms uh, packaging that we haven't released yet. However, you can always go on our website and check them out for the ones that we do have. They're currently in our lipstick tube form, so they'll look like that. But today we're going to make it in our new packaging. So now that everything has melted down and is emulsified, we are going to go directly into pouring into here. Remember, be super careful. And if you need an adult to help you to pour, make sure you have help. So I don't want you to burn yourself. So with that formula that I just used, it was exactly just enough for this tube. 
I have a clear plastic top in here that's going to give it its shape as well as the actual black top that I'm going to put on top. Then I'm going to flip upside down so that it takes the form of the lip balm too. So it's super important to allow your lip balm now to solidify and the emulsifiers to do their job. Of course, it's gonna to start to harden at room temperature, but if you want it to harden faster, put it in the fridge for about five to 10 minutes, but we're gonna let this sit for a little while so that it can start to solidify. And we're gonna come back and look at it. But while we're waiting for that, this is what your final product should look like. You see that? So we're gonna come back and make sure our experiment went well. But while we're doing that, I just want you all to take the time, pull out your phones right now and go to our Instagram, Facebook, or Twitter, whichever you prefer to use and follow us at For Her Cosmetics, that's F-O-R-H-E-R-C-O-S-M-E-T-I-C-S and follow MySpace Laboratories as well. And that's MySpace Labs on Twitter. Um, now, the reason I asked you to, uh, to follow us is because we're actually about to do a knowledge check, a little trivia. Um, if you want, you can use Google. There's nothing wrong with using resources, <laughs> but um, the, first, the first person to answer the chat with the, an the correct answer will actually get sent a free product of their choice. So I'm going to have the people that are watching live now on the webinar, as well as the people that are involved on um, MySpace Laboratories, giving them the opportunity to apply. So the first question is, what happens when a solid turns into a liquid? A, the molecules slow down, B, the molecules speed up, or C, the molecules move at the same pace as before. So I'm waiting for the first answer. We're gonna see answers. Anyone answer? I don't see any, I'm gonna come closer. Do we have an answer on? Okay, we're gonna move on to the next question. I'm gonna give you all the answers at the end. The next question is, what happens when a liquid changes to a solid state now? The molecules slow down, the molecules speed up, or the molecules move at the same pace as before? Drop your answers below. Are you on my space labs? <laughs> Next, our third question is, and this is, you can give us the answer to the best of your ability. What is a melting point? What does it mean? What happens? I'm going to give you guys a few seconds to do that. And then finally, our last question is, what's the difference between a melting point and a boiling point? All right. Now, those are all the questions that we have for our trivia. We, we hope to have four winners, but um, we're going to start with number one. I'm going to give you all the answers. So the first question was, what happens when a solid turns into a liquid? The molecules actually speed up. Now, what happens when a liquid changes to a solid state? It is now, the molecules are actually slowing down. So they're um, not colliding as much as they would if they were in a liquid state. Now, the third question was, what is a melting point? A melting point um, of a substance is the temperature at which the state changes from a solid to a liquid. As heat is applied to a solid, its temperature will increase until the melting point is reached. In this experiment, we were able to reach the melting point of our solids so that they could conjoin with our liquids. Now, the difference between a melting point and a boiling point is that the melting point is when the material changes from a solid to a liquid, while the boiling point is when material changes from a liquid to a gas. So at the boiling point, the molecules are moving extra fast, like very fast. And if you can see it here on the camera, we use boiling water to change the state of our solids so that we can create the homogeneous mixture that we were speaking about earlier. And the steam here is what I was saying, also be careful of because it can burn your hands. But 
now that we've done those questions, I'm going to also tell you guys once again, make sure you follow us on social media at MySpace Laboratories or For Her Cosmetics so that you can join in on more experiments that we host throughout the year. Um, MySpace Laboratories is our nonprofit organization that seeks to increase the retention of young students in science related fields through alternative exploration. So here in MySpace Laboratories, we actually complete beauty experiments. We make lip balms, we make lipsticks, we make um, hand sanitizer, and we actually have some of the products here that we make here in Detroit. For her cosmetics, on the other hand, what you see here is the actual finished product of everything that we're making here today and where we actually sell our products to customers like you. For Her Cosmetics is a STEM-based, all-natural, vegan, and cruelty-free cosmetic line based here in the city of Detroit. And with me being a chemist and a graduate from Michigan State University in their chemistry program, I actually create these products to um, bring forth different just experiences for our customers so that women, especially children, can learn about science through beauty. So if you go to our website at www.forhercosmetics.com, down there on the table, you actually can learn more about what we're doing in our community and how you can actually become involved as well. So now that we've answered those questions, we're gonna want you, we're gonna reach out to you actually um, to get your information to make sure the four people that answer those questions correctly first will receive a product of their choice. So make sure you're following us so we can message you. Now, finally, if you go on to our web, I'm sorry, if you go on to our um, actual virtual booth, you will find all of the resources here that we use today, a supply list, a pre and post lab that you can actually take home parents to your students to do this experiment at home with them at a slower pace where they can uh, keep up. Um, you'll also find a student guide there that allows their your student to actually talk about what they saw, what they smelled, how did they how did the actual product feel, and what does it look like to them. And these are all observations that scientists make. So as mentioned before, this was our finished product. We're going to see if our product from before is finished. I tried to give it some time to finish up and solidify because we don't want liquid, but I think we're going to need to give it a little bit more time because it's still warm over here. But while we're doing that, once again, make sure you visit our website. And if you have any questions, please drop them below. I'm more than happy to answer questions right now. Um, we do have uh, about six more minutes in our live, and I would really like to be of assistance and help to anyone that may have questions about cosmetic chemistry. Um, but that was all I had today for them. Did you see any questions in the live from anybody? No, but we did get an answer. Okay, from that's Tierra good. Tierra Legend. Okay, that's great. So that's really good that you all are listening and that you're looking into science and you're Googling. This is what the purpose of MySpace Laboratories is for, as well as for our cosmetics. Um, another thing actually that I did want to mention is that if you check out MySpace Laboratories, the classes that I was mentioning, we actually offer these classes to students grades three or third through 12, where they can come in and learn how to make um, shampoo, conditioner, soap, body scrubs, exfoliants, rose toner, you name it, we essentially can create it here. And we teach our student not only the beauty benefits of these products, but they also get to learn about how the science is involved in the creation of the products that they use every day, which is super important to me as a chemist and as a woman who uses these products daily. So, once again, I'm gonna show you guys our finished product. This is how your lip balm should look at home. And make sure that you don't forget to let your lip balm cure. Um, the last thing that I did want to actually show you all too is that on our website, if you go to For Cosmetics, you'll also find our cute little stickers that are great for the kiddos if you want to use them. And we actually have a chemist cartoon. Her name is Alyssa. <laughs> and you can add them to your computer. You can add them to like a collection that you may have of stickers. And I'm thinking this is ready now. Let's see what happens. I was nervous, guys. <laughs> so this was the one we just made today. It actually came out perfect. Hopefully yours came out just as great as ours. If not, you can always refer to the resources that we have available at our virtual booth. 
so that you can follow along the instructions at your pace so that you can make your own infamous Lippy Lip Balm by Florida Cosmetics. Okay, I'm five minutes early, guys, but that's all I have for you today. I don't like to ramble, so if you have any questions, please feel free to email us or check us out on social media and DM us. Um, I hope that you have an amazing rest of your weekend and you enjoy Easter and continue to explore, create, and connect in science. Thank you, everyone.